is Dr. Moran again. Um, this time I will, um, I have selected a group of uh, pulmonary cases that we will discuss as clinical pathological uh, correlations in pulmonary cases. Um, just want to say that I do not have any conflict of interest and don't have anything to disclose. Uh, the cases that I have selected uh, for this are rather unusual and challenging to some extent. Um, some of them may be um, easily misdiagnosed, or some of those cases probably people are not aware, and that's why I have selected challenging some to make you aware that those conditions exist as primary um, tumors or lesions in the lung. Let's start with case number one. It's a 64-year-old man who presented with a history of weight loss and chest pain. Radiographic examination showed the presence of a pulmonary mass, and a resection was performed. This is what was received, and as you can see here, this is the, the, the lobe of the lung, and here it is very difficult to tell. Uh, whether there was a mass uh, there or, or not, what we know is that the uh, pulmonary um, architecture is, or, or the pulmonary gross image is, is lost here. It is being replaced by these areas, uh, ill-defined areas, and at higher um, magnification in these uh, areas, we see these strings here, but uh, difficult to tell exactly what is going on here. It is not the common uh, pulmonary mass. Uh, this is soft, a little bit granular in the surface, and difficult to uh, determine, uh, at least by gross inspection, what type of process is the one that we uh, are going to see. Histologically, uh, what we have is portions of lone parenchyma, but then here, you start seeing these areas almost like uh, papillary areas, but they are uh, clear areas, and they are present uh, in some areas al along the um, alveolar wall or uh, sometimes within the alveolar uh, spaces. Higher magnification, and here just for comparison, we have this normal alveolated lung parenchyma. We have some of these uh, structures filling some of the alveolar spaces, but in other areas, this clearly uh, is abnormal. Now, what is of interest is that these round areas, in some areas composed by this mixoid fibrinoid material, but in other areas clearly are represented by adipose tissue that appears to be mature. Here, just to emphasize the two different areas, these have more edematous type here is more like fibrinoid, but there is very little inflammatory reaction present in those, uh, in those areas. Contrary, the other area is mature adipose tissue, and in some there is a combination of the mature and the inflammatory uh, fibrous or fibrinous uh, component. Now, the important thing is the distribution and how one will uh, associate this with the particular entity. This is the so-called pulmonary lipomatosis. Now, this probably represents a variant of what is called placental transmogrification of the lung. Now, what is transmogrification? Probably some of you will think this to be a, a completely new entity to you. And, and yes, it is unusual, but it is not as rare as we think. Transmogrification, if we take it from the dictionary, to, from the English dictionary, means to change in appearance or form strangely or grotesquely, which is exactly what happened with that lung. If we recall the gross appearance, very much not uh, descriptive. It was the lung parenchyma replaced completely by these uh, areas appear soft, they are a little granular, but without any particular well-defined tumor mass. Now, placental transmogrification, it is possible that similar lesions have been coded under different names. One is placental transmogrification of the lung, the other is placentoid bullous lesion of the lung, and the other is pulmonary lipomatosis. 
In my opinion, the three entities represent exactly the same clinical pathological entity. Now, whether we want to call it placental transmogrification or by any other name, uh, it is essentially up to the individual. Personally, I use placental transmogrification even though I am the one who described pulmonary lipomatosis. In retrospect, I think that the entity clearly points in the direction of transmogrification as something that is grotesque, as we saw in the gross uh, appearance of this lesion. The term uh, actually was coined in the abstract form in a USCAP meeting in 1979 by Chesney, who actually is the one who should get the credit for this terminology, transmogrification. Dr. Askin in 1995 presented three additional cases with similar histology. Gene Mark in 1995 uh, from Massachusetts General Hospital presented four cases that he called placentoid bullous lesion. And uh, I and other ones from AFIP uh, some time ago have seen a particular case that we call a pulmonary lipomatosis. Since then, I have seen several other cases, but uh, to be fair to the original description, I think, the, in my opinion, my personal opinion is that all of these uh, it should be coined into one specific condition, and that is placental transmogrification of the lung. Clinically, it has been described essentially in adult individuals, ranging from 23 to 48 years of age, all of these patients have had associated conditions, including cigarette smoking and repeated pneumonias. And that's probably why the gross appearance, it looks like something that is, that has degenerated, uh, looks almost like soap type of degeneration that, that occurs in, in the lung parenchyma. There is no gender predilection. The lesion can have solid and cystic appearance, and surgical resection is curative, and that is the treatment of choice in these cases. Most of the times, and probably more in the recent cases that I have seen, FNA has been performed without a definitive diagnosis. So basically, the diagnosis of transmogrification of the lung cannot be accomplished on FNA or in a small biopsy whether that is uh, transthoracic biopsy or transbronchial biopsy, it will require a complete surgical resection. And that is likely the uh, path to follow with these cases or these patients in which they will go and eventually get a lobectomy or some sort of uh, surgical resection.